Well, hello and welcome back to another stained canvas. Um, today I am actually going to make my own uh, teacher thank you cards for the end of the school year. Um, my son is in junior high and he's got like a hundred teachers, uh, one for every subject. Um, and also there's some uh, sports coaches and things like that. And uh, I thought, you know what, let's try out these new Strathmore watercolor cards that I got. Um, they are cold press and they are really impressive. I really like them. Uh, also comes with a uh, envelope for each card. And uh, this is a 50 pack. I actually picked these up for, um, uh, for my classes uh, in the fall. Um, I'm also going to do a technique called wax resist and I have these uh, Grumbacher, just these plain old wax looking crayon things. You can use a birthday candle if you want, uh, as long as it's wax. Um, so the first step that I do, I use uh, indigo uh, for the dark blue, Chinese white for the highlights and some of the uh, sailboat uh, sails and then cerulean blue for most of the blue in the sky and the water. Uh, first step is to lay down a watercolor wash with the cerulean blue and then you have to let it dry. There's um, several layers in this uh, for this technique but you have to let it dry between each layer so you don't uh, kind of get like that cauliflower you know the I forget what it's called, but when your when your watercolor gets too wet and then it ends up looking not quite what you wanted it to look like. Um, so after the first layer of washes down, you let that dry a bit, and then you take your uh, crayon, uh, my, my wax crayon is just wax, or your candle, that's an excellent one to use, like I just said, and you're gonna make the lines because you're gonna do it on top of the blue so that you save this blue. You're You're actually, saving the light blue when you put on another layer of blue the stuff that's not under the wax will get darker so then you get your really cool uh, different blue lines and everything like that and then once you've done this second wash you're going to let it dry again uh, if you use a, a hair dryer be very cautious because a hair dryer will actually melt the wax any kind of wax um, that you put on it and then you may find that your lines that you're trying to save you know it doesn't just it doesn't turn out so well so you have to give it a good while a good break between um, you know take a whole day to make this and let it dry an hour between between layers and stuff um, but I use the wax resist technique on a couple of the layers and you can tell it's starting to get darker, you know, it, the, the blues are starting to get more deep um, um, and there's starting to be more depth and, and you know, it looks, it starts to look like water. Uh, the last time I do the wax resist, um, I'm actually putting it in and then I'm going to go and use the indigo blue because I want to give it like depth, right? Like I want it to seem like, wow, this water looks deep over here or whatnot. And so I'm going to just put that in the go uh, towards the bottom of my sea or water or lake or whatever it is. Um, and so just from the bottom and I'm going to go up with it because I don't want to overtake all of the cerulean blue. Um, and then again, you've got to let that dry. Um, so I don't go in with an air hair dryer or anything like that. It's just literal. Uh, let it take its time let it dry um, and then after I have the blue as dark as I want the blue to be and like a, I feel like it's a good uh, like depth or whatever and after it's dry I go in with a very detailed uh, watercolor brush it's like a very tiny one uh, with the Chinese white because I want to now add all of the little highlighty parts like like you know when you have a little tiny wave or whatever you're gonna get some white caps and and things like that but I wanted to also show um, water is reflective so I wanted to show some of that bright spot like some of the you know highlighted water spots so I just go over like some of those wax lines and then just put a little thin white line on top of it to make it look like it's shiny water um, and then once that part is done I actually 
uh, go in with the indigo blue again and um, put in the boat. So my sailboats, I didn't want to follow the reference photo exactly. I just kind of wanted like one boat to make it feel like, you know what, this is a vacation boat. It's all on its own. It's relaxing kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, so I was like, okay, well, we're going to put one boat in. I used indigo blue for the boat base. And then I did a very thin line up and that's the mast, like the, the hold the sails. And I went in and I did all that and I let that dry fairly nicely. And then I watered down the indigo blue to make the um, sail, the triangle parts for each side. Cause I didn't want it to be as dark as the physical boat part, like the wooden boat part. Um, and then, so I go in and I do the two sails like that. Um, and then I was like, okay, well, this is still kind of extremely dark and I don't know if I like it like that. So, um, I mixed a little bit of the, um, Chinese white in with the indigo blue. And then I went on top of the sails yet again. And then I got, uh, you know, what I wanted a little bit more. Uh, it looked so much better. It actually looked like, uh, you know, it had a little bit of, of dimension to the sails, even though it's like super far away and it's the tiniest little sailboat on this picture. Um, but I had a lot of fun making it and I'm sure my son's teachers are going to really appreciate this. Um, and I hope you guys try it out. It's just waiting in between layers and a basic wash with the wax resist crayons and, or, you know, birthday candles or whatever your wax is. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys give this a try. It was lots of fun and, um, I will see you guys next time. Bye. Thank